Welcome to Innovation Dialogue. I'm Diana Dean. Today we are with Christian Malasic. Who is him? He's a new CEO and the, uh, president of Silicon Valley Chamber of Commerce, Silicon Valley Central Chamber of Commerce. Hi, Christian. Hi. Wel welcome. Welcome. Hi, it's exciting to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you. Thank you. I heard that you are from far away Philadelphia. Philadelphia area, actually Pennsylvania, yeah. So uh, it, was a, it was a great trip across country to come back to California. This is the, the fourth time I've been here and hopefully the longest time that, uh, that I will have lived here. Wow, fourth time, only fourth time being here. So why you choose here? Why did I choose here? Because uh, this is Silicon Valley and there's amazing things that have happened here. We, we can tell the story of the modern era, the you know, the technological age, if you will, uh, in, in tie in Silicon Valley. But there's challenges here, and uh, the board of the directors was, was really looking for a CEO that can help them work through those challenges, and uh, it, what a great opportunity. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you for traveling all the way here. But, well, the, when people say talking about Silicon Valley, they kind of imagine high tech and, you know, so many businesses. But when you are here, what, what did you see? Well, you know what I see is a bunch of Americans. I see uh, people that are trying to make their way. People, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm walking the streets and living in the community. I have an apartment locally. I'm grocery shopping last night and uh, enjoying uh, the restaurants with my, my kids as best as I can, takeout. So I'm in the community. So I, I see an American city. Um, but what, what's different about Silicon Valley is we, we tend to attract those that think a little bit different maybe than the rest of America and mm -hmm. certainly different than the rest of the world. We attract entrepreneurs and that's what makes this area really exciting. Yes, well, you know, so many of our uh, business uh, owners and in the business community, they want to know about you because, you know, uh, Silicon Valley Central Chamber of Commerce has been here for a very long time. Yeah. We have a bunch of very good people, uh, our you know, members here. We work together and we honor and help each other. So they want to know who you are. Can you give us a brief introduction about yourself? A brief introduction about myself. Well, uh, you know, I think the, uh, to use a Silicon Valley term that goes back to the 1970s, Steve Wozniak, as he was forming this little company that we've all heard of called Apple Computers with Steve Jobs, uh, he coined the term WuzzyWig. And that stands for what you see is what you get. And they just, it's the letters of the, the first word, an acronym. And that's me. Uh, this is me. This is who I am. Um, so if you like it, yeah, great. If, if you don't like it, oh, I'll work a little harder. Uh, <laughs> but but this, this is who I am. Uh, I'm, I'm an, a very excitable. I'm a passionate person. Um, but uh, I also can get very serious. Uh, my first degree is in electrical engineering, mm -hmm. and I've been in business for quite some time. I have four different degrees, mm -hmm. and uh, I just, I love the numbers. I love studying, and the things that I love the most is really working with the business community to advance the community. So maybe we should start there. Um, I, I grew up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, uh, which is a city, a small city. San Jose is huge compared to Harrisburg. We're not even going to talk about San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, so Harrisburg is a city between Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. And back at the beginning of the country in the 1700s, when they were trying to decide where the capital of Pennsylvania were, the two were fighting over it. So they decided, well, let's put it in the middle. And there was nothing in the middle. It was farmland. But there was this man named John Harris who was running a ferry across, across the river, the Susquehanna River, named after the Susquehanna Indians. And they said, well, let's put it in Harristown, or which became oh. Harrisburg. Oh. And that grew up to the capital, and uh, it's a small city now, and that's, that's where I'm from. So I, I grew up there. Um, I did college in Pennsylvania, and I went into the United States Air Force. So mm -hmm. I was in the Air Force for almost six years as an Air Force officer. From there, I got into business, starting my own company, and I did that for almost 20 years, about, I guess, about 16 years. What's the company? For profit. I, the company was called CM Squared, my initials, mm -hmm. Christian Malesic, CM Squared, the mathematical symbol, because I was in business with my brother, mm -hmm. and his name is Craig Malesic, so our oh. initials are the same. Yes. Uh, two electrical engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to Drexel University. I went to Lehigh University in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. And uh, we started a, an engineering and, and lighting design company. 
And, and what would happen is we would work with the customer for weeks or months and we'd, we'd design the lighting like in your beautiful studio or a landscape lighting at someone's house or maybe conference lighting in a, in a fancy conference room or whatever it may be, restaurant lighting. And we'd get all done after working several meetings and several days with the, the customer and we'd slide the plans across the table and you know what they'd say? Do it! Oh. We say, well, no, no, we, we don't do it. We're, we're the engineers. We're done now. We yeah. did it. We, uh -huh. So we, we st started finding that they wanted people to help install. install. Oh, they yeah. wanted electricians. Mm -hmm. So we started hiring electricians, and that side of the business grew. And from there, I got into this line of work. I got into not-for-profit work. Wow, that's so wonderful. So you got a really a rich experience in the business. Uh, and you were in the Air Force. Well, thank you for your great service. Oh, yeah, thank we, you. We're so honored to have you that as a veteran. And what that experience help you to become who you are today? Oh, how much time do we have today? Uh, that could, oh, take, well, me, shot that could that, huh? take me all day. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I, my start in the Air Force was right here in California, just uh, oh. a little bit south of us at Vandenberg Air Force Base. That's where oh. I did my, my boot camp. So that was my first experience to California and my first experience well, with the Well, welcome back. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, boy, what, what do you learn in the Air Force? Well, I was an Air Force officer, so mm -hmm. we're learning how to manage people, mm -hmm. projects, and money. Mm -hmm. And... Am I talking about the Air Force or am I talking about business? It, it well, combi kind of combine them. Right. Yeah. Management, you know, people and money. That's, that's business, actually. Right, right. So it, 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 yeah. it, it translates so nicely. Now, obviously, the Air Force is about mm -hmm. the flying and fighting mission. Mm -hmm. uh, I started my career in nuclear weapons, so mm, top wow. secret work. Yeah, yeah. Huh? And uh, so, you know, we're, we're, it's a different kind of mission, mm -hmm. but in the end, it's about managing people, projects, and money. And uh, that's why it translates so nicely to the business world. So what's the difference by managing people at the Air Force and also in the chamber? Well, the difference is uh, if the troops don't listen to me, they go to jail. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, they, well, you don't want to do that, no, right? <laughs> no, uh, we always kid around that they end up making big rocks into little rocks. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's not 100% true, but it's, it's pretty, I mean, if you don't listen in the military, you mm -hmm. get court-martialed, and mm -hmm. uh, that could mean that you get thrown in military jail or you get, mm -hmm. you know, kicked out of the service, uh, bad conduct discharge or such. So... Um, I never had that. I never had anyone that didn't listen to you. When you're the officer, they, you know, I, I, sir, and, uh, yes. and, and they listen. In, in business, it's more about persuasion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more about your personality. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't matter how good your persuasion is, mm -hmm. how big your smile is, or how, how neat your suit is. It comes down to what's on the page, what's mm -hmm. on the paper. Mm -hmm. You have to have good ideas. Mm -hmm. And those ideas have to make sense for business to be profitable or to help other businesses to grow. Mm. So that's the big difference. You sound like a businessman <laughs> right now. Well. So, well, well, I probably, you know, taking the chamber as a business or a yes. nonprofit. And how are you going to, you know, have a, what's the, your great ideas for our chamber? Yeah, well, right now, uh, I think the magic word is recovery. Mm -hmm. um, we not only need to recover out of this pandemic, but maybe even more importantly, mm -hmm. we need to help, especially the small businesses, mm -hmm. to recover. Uh, a number of businesses are going out of business or they've dipped into their savings. These are probably the hardest times that they've ever had, maybe with the exception of their first couple of months or even year in business when things are always mm -hmm. difficult for a startup. But for some, it's even harder than that. You know, the difference is, at least when you're a startup, you're trying it, you think you can do it, but maybe you have a backup plan mm -hmm. if it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. These businesses have been in, in, in business for generations for some of them, or people's whole lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And everything was going right. Mm -hmm. They made all the right business decisions. And then, pandemic. Yeah, exactly. You know, like my friend, they own the China Steak restaurant. That's my favorite restaurant, you know. Uh, during the pandemic, it's really a struggle for them. But sure. uh, like what you're saying, recovery, but how? Because for safety reasons, we are not allowed. And how can we do that? Yeah, and this, this is the real challenge right mm -hmm. now. I mean, what do we do between now and when we come out of the pandemic and we can start meeting in person and having events and having education? You know, what the Silicon Valley Central Chamber does best is we do three things. We do advocate. Mm -hmm. We work with city hall and governments. We do educate. Mm -hmm. And we do connect. Mm -hmm. And connect 
is really about what we're doing today. It's connect works best, not when we're in front of a video screen. And, and I realize we're in Silicon Valley, and, and we feel very comfortable with tech in our hands and in and in. No, no, we screen. have to. That's be we, because we have because to. Because we have it's to. Not, it's not what we like. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yes, that's right. Yes. But uh, we, we need to get back to a, par a point where business can do business face to face. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, we don't buy because we like a business. Mm -hmm. We buy from people. Yes. We're in the people business. Yes. You, you of all people know that. Yeah, exactly. It's all the community. That's uh, right. People build up the trust. So, you know, people work together and help each other. Yeah. So when you are here, just uh, two or three weeks, right? So what yeah. do you see the opportunities for our chamber? Well, we have tremendous opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, our job as a, as a chamber is mm -hmm. to help businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so I have the best job in the world. Um, you know, I, I love my job. I get out of bed every day and I'm excited to go to work because my job is to help other businesses. You sound like an entrepreneur, a startup well, company. <laughs> I, I've done some of that myself yes. and, and uh, maybe not as successful as some, mm -hmm. but more successful than others. And, uh, you know, I, I've had such a good run that I, I like giving that back to other businesses and help to them to do way better than I ever did. So what excited you? You, you said you... you you got up every day, get excited. So what excited you most? I, I think it's the challenges that we have mm -hmm. and the opportunity. Mm -hmm. With challenge comes opportunity. Mm -hmm. So with all of the problems that we're having in Silicon Valley, that, that's happening in the world, mm -hmm. but it, it's, it's hit us a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. You know, Santa Clara and the state of California have had stronger lockdowns mm -hmm. than almost any other state in the union. Mm -hmm. and, and it's been very challenging coming from the government. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to make this about politics. Uh, it, it is about health and the government is tr various governments mm -hmm. are trying to do the best they can do. But it's time to get back to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, to get back to work, we need to start meeting in person and, and being able to have face-to-face -face business again. Mm, start meeting in person. I think there are tons of things uh, for you to meet. Uh, I don't think you have enough time when we start a meeting in person. But what's your priority? Well, the priority is to do everything we can about communication with our members at this point mm -hmm. so that we can help them get through hopefully the next couple of months. Uh, none of us really know mm -hmm. when this is going to change back to normal, but we hope it's going to be only another couple of months. Uh, some are saying it's going to be another year or two. I, I'm more positive. I'm more optimistic. Mm. Um, we need to help them get through this. And again, we do that through communication and networking. But more importantly, I hope, is that we need to be ready to open up. And I'll tell you what, when we are able to open and when we believe our board of directors believes it's safe and the government tells us it's okay, the Silicon Valley Central Chamber is going to be the first one getting back to having events and doing things in person again because, again, we're here about business. We want to help them. Well, sounds so exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. And we, you know, we, we, are, we be the first one to, to start all the kinds of events. But what if the pandemic still lasts longer and we are not able to open? Um, well, well, I'm sorry that you come to take this position in the, such right. a pandemic. Uh, what's your plan if we cannot open? Right, and that's, that's challenging. And mm -hmm. we, uh, we all do the best we can in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, our, our plan is to try and do more virtually than we've done in the past, again, focusing more on the education and the, and the communication or the networking. Mm -hmm. um, we, we need to bring businesses together, and we need to help them get through it. Part of the challenges of the pandemic is every day the story has changed, mm -hmm. right? First, we weren't supposed to wear any masks a year ago, and then we were supposed to wear a mask. Now we're talking about wearing two masks. What's the right answer, right? First, we weren't supposed to get the vaccine. Now we're supposed to get it. We're waiting on it, you know, for the, the re re regular people, not just the politicians and, and special mm -hmm. groups, to be able to go to the stadium and start getting vaccines. So the, the, the news is changing day to day, and that's part of where the chamber can be to help mm -hmm. with that, to help give that information to the business owners so they don't need to look everywhere and find out what's going on. They can look in one place, mm -hmm. and we can help them succeed and get through that. So it's about training and education and providing news. Mm -hmm. That's what we can do in the short term. And in the end, we can just keep on fighting for the businesses so that they can get back. Mm, wow, that sounds really good. Well, I thank you for thought about this. Very thoughtful. Um, I, I, I know that you, you were a 
elected official. You were a school mm. board for four and a half years, right? I was, yes. Yes, so, well, you are here, and uh, what, what will that bring to our chamber and to this community? Well, you know, that was an interesting experience and an interesting time. Uh, I was president of the school board, too, mm -hmm. and uh, the word that the newspapers used was contentious. Mm -hmm. The most contentious, that means this, right? Mm -hmm. The most contentious school board in the whole state of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to tell you, it was true. Uh, we fought all the time. Now, we fought professionally. Mm -hmm. we, didn't, we didn't make it personal. Mm -hmm. But we were at each other all the time. What do you learn from an experience like that? Well, you, you end up learning how to get along with people that you have completely different mm -hmm. ideas. You, you face the world from exactly the opposite point of view. Mm -hmm. And we have some of those challenges in our very own city council. No matter which of the local cities in, mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley we're talking about, um, some of those challenges with the various mayors in city council. Certainly there's uh, a motion afoot with the, uh, with the governor and a recall motion. And so there's a lot going on on the political front. So having that a political experience, and, and I'm not interested in being a politician anymore. Why? Uh, well, <laughs> I've had my time doing okay. that, right? Um, yeah. Now mm -hmm. I, I advocate for business. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat or an independent. Mm -hmm. If you're about business, you're our friend. Mm, if you are about business, you are a friend. That's so, right. for our chamber's future, there are lots of things to do. But for you, what is the most challenge? What, what is the biggest challenge for you? Yeah, the biggest challenge is that uh, our, our chamber was a lot bigger. Mm. And it's shrinking. And uh, every business owner that's watching this or listening to this knows that feeling. Uh, there's a few businesses that are doing better in this time. Mm -hmm. um, but most are not. And so they understand what it's like to shrink, and you already had tight margins. You already weren't making that much profit to begin with. And that's happened to our chamber. We are shrinking. Yes, that's right. Exactly. That's right. Mm -hmm. So in addition to all the things we've been talking about as a chamber of commerce, we are a business too, and we have to pay our bills mm -hmm. and pay our employees. Mm -hmm. and, and we've shrunk quite a bit. And so uh, I have to roll up my sleeves and, and really get to work to figure out how we can use the, the money the best we possibly can. When, when businesses pay their dues to the chamber, mm -hmm. they expect that the chamber to really be of value to them. Mm -hmm. So we, we can't raise dues just because times are tight. Mm -hmm. Members can't afford that. So we have to really look at our budgets and cut wherever we can and come up with other income streams just like businesses do. So where are you going to spend the money? Well, I think a better way to say it is where we're going to save the money. Okay. Where yeah. How are you going to save right, the money? Right. Yes. <laughs> so um, we, we can't spend like we used to. Mm -hmm. We were a much bigger chamber. We had a lot more members. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just not there anymore. So it's more about where are we going to sp save the money. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you do that, that austerity uh, the way any business is do does it. You look at all of the products and the services and the partners that you have and you decide, you make the hard decision. It's not, it's never easy. This one needs to go and that one can stay. This one's only half of what we used to do. They're the tough decisions that we got to make. And I, I've already been doing that for two weeks now. Mm. I know that our chamber is a nonprofit, but you still need to have a business model. So where, what, what, what are the major income for our chamber? Yeah, so it, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that. So nonprofit is a tax status. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean we're not allowed to make a profit, mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean we're not supposed to make a profit. It means that we don't pay tax on our profit. That's all it means. The, the income stream, it basically breaks down into two, which is pretty simple. Dues revenue, and then what they call non-dues revenue. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, pretty simple. Membership and events, right? Membership and events. Mm -hmm. And guess what we're not having any of? Yeah. Events. We don't have events right, right. now. Yeah. Yeah. We used to have one of the biggest galas and award ceremonies mm -hmm. in all of Silicon mm -hmm. Valley, attracting hundreds of people. Everybody had fun. Mm -hmm. They dressed up beautifully, and we had a great night together. Mm -hmm. We rose a glass and ate great food, and we haven't done that. So we want to bring that back, and we want to bring it back stronger than other mm -hmm. ever, uh, but we got to wait until it's safe to do that. Yeah, well, when the pandemic is over, and what is the first event you want to do? Oh, it depends on when, it, when it's over, doesn't it? Uh, the first couple events we will do will be the smaller events that we can start rolling out very quickly. Mm -hmm. The problem with something like the awards gala that we talked about mm -hmm. is it takes a lot of planning. It's a big event, a lot of promotion, so people know about it. People will come if they know about it, but we have to advertise. 
Um, what's easier with some of the smaller events is we can get that out by social media. We can make a couple of mm -hmm. phone calls, put it on our website, mm -hmm. and we can have that. So I'm sure the first couple events will be the smaller kind of networking, having coffee or maybe having a, a glass of wine in the evening together and getting back to see of all of our friends. I don't know if we'll be able to give hugs quite yet right out of the pandemic, but we'll at least be able to look each other face to face and uh, see each other again for the first time in a while. Yes, exactly. Now, before we uh, finish our show and the last question is during the pandemic, because you used to be so active, uh, you know, in your community and doing so well uh, for the chamber. but. This pandemic really changed our, you know, I would say lifestyle of many of the business. Maybe 30% is already out of business. So during this pandemic, um, what has, have you been changed? I mean, the, you know, mindset or mm. the way of you see things? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I personally, I've gotten a lot better at virtual. Mm -hmm. I think I know all of the virtual platforms and I feel very comfortable now. Uh, I had done virtual meetings before, but they were rare mm -hmm. um, in, in my world. We did everything in person. All of our meetings were always in person in the chamber. So I've gotten really good at that. Um, I've, had to, I've had to kind of take what's old is new again or what's new is old again. Um, the, one of the tools that I've been using quite a bit is the telephone. And, and, you know, in the last maybe 10 years, we've, we still use the telephone, but we, we more use email, right? We've gotten very comfortable with email. And now text. We've gotten very comfortable with text. I, I have found that I like to pick up the phone and hear somebody's voice or do virtual if I can. That's the best we got right now when we can't meet in person. So some of those tools have come full circle again. And I've, I've, I've learned, I always knew the value of face-to-face -face and personal contact. Um, but I've come to really appreciate that if you can't have that, at least if we can talk on the phone or maybe see each other mm -hmm. on a screen. So yeah. that, that really has been hit home. Well, you, you know, also for me, I learned that it's more valuable for people's friendship and relationship. Of course. Yes. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's a great way to say it. That's really what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, exactly. It, it, it's like I said earlier, <laughs> we, we do business with people. We don't do business with companies. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. yeah before I was so busy running around, but right now I'm kind of real focused on some of the p important people in my life and spend more time. And uh, I think that's a uh, pandemic in a positive way changed us in a good way. Uh, we more cherish what we have right now. And what we got going mm -hmm. for us in Silicon Valley is, again, the land of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So what's the new America going to look like? What's the new world going to look like? Mm -hmm. You know who's going to decide that? Us right here in Silicon Valley. Well, that's great. Since we're in Silicon Valley, so what is, in, in, uh, what is innovation by your definition if it's in one or two sentences? Innovation is deciding what people need and help them have an easier and better life tomorrow or in business to be better at business tomorrow than they were today. That's what innovation oh, is. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming to our show. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for having me.